Jordan Peterson is about to break down for us how to succeed, how to achieve our highest good, as he puts it. This is the biblical series, Walking with God, Noah and the Flood. You look that up, there's a link in the description. We're at one hour, one minute, 43 seconds. And I'm going to actually take what he says and connect it to some real world actionable advice that you can do directly after you watch this video. I'm Coach Colin, coolest high performance coach in the world. And if you want the absolute best insights to the podcast and videos you love, hit that subscribe button. Let's get it. And then strive to attain it. There's no more practical pathway to the kind of success that you could have if you actually knew what success was. And so that's what this, that's what this sermon is attempting to, to posit. It's like in, in the story of Pinocchio. You know, what happens at the beginning of the story of Pinocchio is that Geppetto wishes on a star. We talked about that a little bit. And so what Geppetto does is align himself with the metaphorical manifestation of the highest good he can conceptualize and say, he says, he, he, makes a, he makes a commitment, let's say, he aims at the star, and for him the star is the possibility that he can take his creation, a puppet, right, whose strings are being pulled by unseen forces, and have it transform into something that's autonomous and real. Well, that's a hell of an ambition. You know, and we're wise enough to put that in a children's movie, but too foolish to understand what it means. It's such an interesting juxtaposition that, that we can both know that and not know it at the same time. You can go to the movie, you can watch it, and it makes sense. But that doesn't mean that you can go home and think, well, I know what that meant. Well, people are complicated, right? We exist at different levels, and all the levels don't communicate with one another. But, but the movie is a hypothesis, and the hypothesis is... There's no better pathway to self-realization and the ennoblement of being than to posit the highest good that you can conceive of and commit yourself to it. And then you might also ask yourself, and this is definitely worth asking, is do you really have anything better to do? And if you don't, well, why would you do anything else? Therefore, take no thought for the morrow, for the morrow shall take thought for the things of itself. Sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. I spent a long time trying to figure out what that meant, too, because it's another one of those lines that can easily be read as pro-grasshopper and anti-ant, you know? You remember the old fable of the grasshopper and the ant? Maybe not. I'm not going to tell it, but... The ant works and the grasshopper fiddles, and the ant has a pretty good time in the winter and the grasshopper dies. And so, this is like a pro-grasshopper line, but it's not, because it says something else. It says that if you orient yourself properly and then pay attention to what you do every day, that works. And it, I actually think that that's in accordance with, with what we have come to understand about human perception, because what happens is that the world shifts itself around your aim. Because you're, you're a creature that has an aim. You have to have an aim in order to do something. You're an aiming creature. You look at a point and you move towards it. It's built right into you. And so you have an aim. Well, let's say your aim is the highest possible aim. Well, then, so that sets up the world around you. It, it organizes all of your perceptions. It organizes what you see and you don't see. It organizes your emotions and your motivations. So you organize yourself around that aim. And then what happens is the day manifests itself as a set of challenges and problems, and if you solve them properly, then you stay on the pathway towards that aim. And you can concentrate on the, on the, on the day. And so that way you get to have your cake and eat it too, because you can, you can point into the distance, the far distance, and you can live in the day. And it seems to me that that's, that makes every moment of the day supercharged with meaning. That, that's how, because if everything that you're doing every day is related to the highest possible aim that you can conceptualize, well, that's the very definition of the meaning that would sustain you in your life. Well, and then the issue is, well, back to Noah. Well, all hell's about to break loose and chaos is coming. It's like when that's happening in your life, you might want to be doing something that you regard as truly worthwhile. Because that's what will keep you afloat when, when everything is flooded. And you don't want to wait until the flood comes to start doing that because 
if your ark's half built and you don't know how to captain it, the probability is very high that, that you'll drown. Man, extremely, extremely true. Now, the actionable advice that I was talking about, it actually lines up so well. And I realized that as I was listening to this for like a fifth and sixth time, it lines up perfectly with a coaching method that I actually use for people. And, you know, there's I'm just going to tell you guys what it is. So so when we go back to what he talked about, when he talked about like what success is, like if you knew what success was, well, your success are your core values. Like I always have people flush out what their core values are. What are the things that you stand for when all the chips are down, when life's at its worst? What are the things that you must uphold in your life? The reason that you do that is because those things, if you follow those things, if you stay to those things, it gives you integrity. So how do you keep your integrity via your core values? It's your habits. It's what you do every day. So your Geppetto and your Pinocchio. Pinocchio is like your mindset, your integrity, your goals. And, 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 and at the beginning, when you first set out to do this type of thing, when you, you first set out to be a better person, a better man, you're, it's wooden. It's wooden and it's flimsy. And it's easily broken. That's your mindset, your goals, your integrity. It's all flimsy. You're not sure if it can withstand the pressures of life. So making Pinocchio real is you becoming the best version of yourself. That's just exactly what it is. And you, be, you, you then have real integrity. You then have real goals. You then have real mindset. Not this flimsy wooden one that's like easily broken, right? To become a real boy, to become real flesh and bone, to become resilient, right? And you're doing that, again, via your habits. Your habits are the thing that's going to take you to that place where you have integrity and you become real, right? So you know that you could be this way, but you're not, oh, perfect. To what he said towards, you know, we put it in a children's movie, and it's like we know enough to watch the movie, but we don't go. We go home and we don't know what it means. The same thing happens to you and your habits all the time. It's like you know that you should do certain things. You understand that they're good. You know on a surface level like it's good to just do the things I should do and you know what the things are. But you don't really understand why they're so good. And that's why I have people flush out the core values because the core values what they do is they connect you to you. When you figure out what your core values are, you connect to a deeper part of yourself. When those core values are reflected in your habits, you are now connected to you on a daily basis. And that's what you want. You want to, con you want to connect to that deepest or highest good or highest self that you have inside of you or that you're envisioning, you know? So... You commit to your core values via, you know, in my program, I do 10 habits. I have, have people do two habits per core value. So it's 10 habits every single day that you have to do that connect you to your core values, that connect you to your integrity, that connect you to true confidence because you know that you actually stand for something and you show it every single day. It makes you a real boy, a real person. Stop saying real boy. Like it makes you a real man, it makes you real. Right. Um, so to what he was talking about when he was saying you have to aim, you have to aim, you pay attention and record these habits every single day. Right. The 10 habits that I'm talking about, this keeps you aimed in the far distance and gives you the ability to live in the day. So when your core value, when your habits are geared towards that highest self that's in the distance, that that highest good that's in the distance every single day by executing on those habits you get to live in the day when he was talking about the day being supercharged the supercharged with meaning that's how you keep the day supercharged you know that your highest self stands for these series of core values which you determine which are a part of you what you stand for and every single day you execute on those so every single day you show yourself that you actually stand for something and that is going to supercharge your day with meaning, right? It's not just about drinking enough water and this and that. It's, it's, it's real 
habits that are really connected to your core values, right? And then that keeps you afloat. So when he talks about, when he talks about, you know, you know, uh, um, the flood coming and that will keep you afloat. It's because meaning like when life gets rough, like, like I'm using what he's talking about in terms of the flood is like a metaphor for life. Like eventually the world is going to flood. Your world is going to flood by which I mean, things are going to get hard for you. They're going to get really hard. Something's going to happen. A storm's going to occur and things are going to get rough. And if you're living a life that is supercharged with meaning, when these things do happen, when things do get rough, you'll be able to withstand the storm because you have these pillars, these core values and these habits that you live by and that you execute every single day. So it will keep you afloat when things get hard. Whereas if you don't have these core values and you don't have any aim or habits that you're trying to, to, to attain every day and, and, and a vision of, of a better self that's in the distance, when things get rough, you will sink. You will. So it's so important for you to, to have, that, have that aim in mind towards that highest good, that highest self. Have those habits that bring you closer to it every single day because it'll supercharge your day with meaning, but also it will keep you afloat when things get hard. It will keep you focused more so. You'll stay focused, right? Like if something, a couple of bad things happen in my day, because I have these habits, because I do this myself every day, because I have these habits and I'm moving towards them every day, I have something that I'm able to stay focused in. You know, it's like if some like like I'm keeping my vision here. If something came and started knocking me here, well, I'm focused. I can just bat that thing away you know, or withstand it and just keep focused and keep moving. Um, and then to start now and not let, when life gets really rough, of course not. Like don't start, don't start exactly what he said with the ants and the grasshopper. Don't start saving up food when you see the first snowfall. You have to do this beforehand, right? You have to prepare far in advance. So again, if something bad were to come into my life, which eventually something will, I have been doing this for so long that I'm going to be able to withstand it because every day I'm moving towards these core values. I'm moving toward, towards these core values with my habits. And <sighs> I'm on one breath here. <laughs> and, and, and that will keep me from allowing life to overtake me. Because I stand for something. I have integrity. I am a real person. I am a real boy. I am flesh and bone. I am resilient flesh and bone, not flimsy wood that can be broken in one stroke or one snap, you know? So that's just what I learned uh, listening to this part of, again, the biblical series. There's going to be a link in the description below walking with God, Noah in the flood. Again, we are at one hour, two minutes, four seconds. If you want to hear that part again, I'm out. <laughs>